impact and legacy have shaped the very edge of capability across the total force. The Air National Guard, Air Force Reserve Command Test Center, AATC. The story begins in 1981 in the high desert of Tucson, Arizona, with a bold idea that the ARC should not merely adopt technology developed by others, but should be at the forefront of testing and fielding combat capabilities. Out of this idea came the formation of the Air Reserve Component Fighter Weapons Office with a simple but powerful mission to be the operational test and evaluation arm for the Air Reserve Component. Its founders envisioned a lean, agile team that could test, evaluate, and field capability directly to the warfighter and fast. In 1982, the leaders of Tactical Air Command, the Air National Guard, and the AFRIC formally established the ARC Fighter Weapons Office a partnership that remains one of AATC's greatest strengths. In 1987, the Fighter Weapons Office was renamed the Air National Guard Air Force Reserve Command Test Center. From its earliest days, AATC is focused on fielding advanced capabilities with the same agility and precision as their active component counterparts. AATC did more than just keep pace. It started setting the pace, often by taking commercial solutions or low-cost modifications and proving their viability in real-world environments. AATC ensured that ARC pilots weren't flying yesterday's technology into today's battle space and quickly carved out a reputation for delivering combat capability to the warfighter fast, cost-effectively, and without compromise. As the G-Water unfolded, the test center's role expanded dramatically. AATC proved its value in combat by rapidly integrating targeting pods, GPS weapons, data links, and threat warning systems many of which were fielded directly into combat zones in record time. These weren't lab projects. They were, they were life-saving tools fielded by citizen airmen for citizen airmen. Today, AATC conducts tests and evaluation across numerous platforms and mission sets. And now, the F-35. It manages more than $50 million in annual test uh, programs and continues to lead some of the most consequential modernization efforts in the Air Force. It is a model for innovation and rapid modernization, an organization that breaks down stovepipes and accelerates warfighter readiness. Its efforts have saved the DOD hundreds of millions of dollars and delivered life-saving capability to airmen faster than ever before. Our success isn't just about fielding tech, it's about capability, a success that stems from an ability to connect strategic objectives to tactical innovation, to translate national defense priorities into combat ready capabilities and turn potential into performance. It's about the culture of innovation, the drive to challenge legacy assumptions, and the commitment to deliver combat capability faster, better, and smarter. It's about AATC people coming together with a singular focus to ensure our warfighters have the decisive edge no matter the adversary or the domain. As we look to the future towards strategic pacing threats and the accelerating pace of global competition, AATC's role has never been more vital to staying ahead of the curve. In a world where speed, agility, and integration are key, AATC delivers, and it's not just prepared for the future, it's helping to shape it. It's a lean, agile, mission-focused unit that lives at the intersection of operational experience and innovation, living proof that the ARC can lead modernization, not just support it. In closing, the history of AATC is a story of ingenuity, determination, and excellence, a testament to what citizen airmen can accomplish when empowered to lead. A reminder that innovation doesn't only happen in laboratories or headquarters, it happens right here in the field by dedicated professionals who never stop pushing the mission forward. I now have the great honor of introducing to the stage a mentor and friend, Acting Director of the Air National Guard, Major General Duke Juice Pirac. Morning, everybody. How are we doing? General Sabrich, I gotta tell you, it's, it's an honor to preside over this ceremony with you in partnership with the Air National Guard. Uh, General Massaro, thank you for all that you've done to host us here. I really appreciate it. General Coffey, CSM Chief. I got a speech here that's really well written. It's about an hour long. Uh, I'm not gonna use it. Uh, I'll be able to send it out to you later. You can read it and have fun with that. I am, though, particularly moved today, and i got a couple things to say. I don't think there's anybody in this room that doesn't think we got a fight coming. If you don't think that, 
you probably got your head in the sand, right? I think as warriors, we understand and realize this, and it's our solemn responsibility to take care of our force. Does our, do our priorities, does our pace, what we're working on, how we're training, how we're gener generating readiness, does it match that reality? I ask that question of myself every single day. The privilege of my position, I have become singularly obsessed with wartime readiness. I know in my heart, I know it, that at some point in my tenure, I'll be sending our men and women off to war. I'll be patting them on the back. I do not want to have any regrets at that moment that I haven't done my level best leading up to that point to ensure that I've enabled and empowered, that I've fought for the right things, I spent money in the right way to have our men and women ready for war. And it's going to happen. It is. Anybody else in this room here in the test community frustrated looking at our adversaries at the pace at which they are innovating? We should be offended by that. Yet we are our own worst enemy. I'm not saying anything denigrating. I don't mean to denigrate our test apparatus, our industry. We are what we are. We are safe and effective. But we must move faster. Creating this air dominant CTF here with the F-35 is an exemplar of that. And I gotta tell you, Gina, you gotta be careful when you say anything around Roscoe because it happens like six months later, okay? Probably doesn't deserve enough credit for the pace at which this man has able, been able to will this. And I gotta tell you, if it weren't for the partnership with the Vermont Air National Guard, Alabama Air National Guard, the 96th, the 33rd Air Force Reserve, and the JPO, it wouldn't have happened. But we are here and it is happening. For those who might not be fully acquainted, Roscoe gave a great roll up of the test center something about the culture of that organization that I just, I so love. There's all kinds of great quotes hanging from some of the great test center directors all around the building, one of which I appreciate most is, it doesn't count until it's flying in the field, right? And I know many of you are test professionals in the room, marvel at what we're creating, but must think to yourself, it really doesn't matter until it's strapped to this one and this one, being used by a warfighter. All the bugs worked out, TTP's worked out, and it's generating lethality. We must move at the speed of relevance. What I also admire about the Air National Guard Air Force Reserve Test Center, it is a true manifestation of our culture in the Guard and the Reserve. This isn't a complaint about our reality, Gina. You and I talk about this all the time. We are asked to generate the same level of readiness for about you know, 30 cents on the dollar, however you want to measure that. That's our lot in life. In many ways, it's also the wellspring of our strength. Because if you're, if you're never fully funded, you never have all the resources you need, not that anybody does, you naturally become an innovator. You're trying to figure out the 80% solution for 20% of the cost, another famous test center model. I think that the opportunity to bring a relatively new airplane in our Air Force uh, under the fold of an Air National Guard Air Force Reserve test center debt is a great opportunity to leverage that natural innovative spirit. We'll get after the kind of interoperability we need to get after. We'll get after the open mission system architecture. And you know what? Along the way with the rest of our active test apparatus, maybe a little competition does us good. But today is about partnership. Partnership with the Air National Guard Air Force Reserve, partnership with Vermont, Alabama, the 9633rd and the JPO, and it's about progress. The progress must start today, but it must increase tenfold, trust me, I'm telling you, because if you believe in your heart like I do, that we got a fight coming. That's the sense of urgency we must inculcate into our test apparatus. And I have every confidence you'll make it happen. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Please welcome the 10th Air Force Commander, Major General Gina Sabrick. All right, thank you and welcome. I too have a speech, but you probably use a little bit of it. Um, I wanted to say it's an honor to be here um, as part of the Guard and the Reserve relationship. This is a big day for us, and it took a lot of people to get here, and I want to say thanks particularly to those in the front row 
who made the F-35 CTF um, the reality that it is today. Um, a lot of thanks goes out to everybody, right? The 96th, the 33rd, the 53rd, AATC, Vermont, Florida, Montgomery, the JPO, all of it. It took a really long time to get here. Uh, General Perrick and I talk a lot about TFI. You know, we live it every day. I will tell you, we talk a lot about it, but there's a lot of times you're like, what is it? It's this. I will tell you, it is absolutely this. It is the active duty, the guard, the reserve, civilians, joint tests, all coming together, TR2, TR3 jets, all coming together for one reason, to make us more lethal. That is exactly what this is going to do. As we look at this, I was telling Roscoe earlier today, um, it's a little bit of kind of a full circle to me. I learned how, I learned uh, in the 33rd fighter wing in 2018 how to fly this airplane. So I know the capability of it, and I've been flying it, and I was like, we all know this is the airplane we are taking to combat. This is what we are taking to the fight General Perrick just mentioned, right? And we need to make it more lethal, and we need to make it better. So in AATC, we're good at this. We did this in the A-10, we did this in the F-16, and now we'll do it in the F-35. We've got the experience, the expertise, we've got Ingria. There's a few things that we can get after to help this. It'll be a team effort, but I've no doubt AATC is the right place for this to be. Um, we've kind of seen all the things they've done in the past. Roscoe kind of hit a lot of the history of AATC, so I won't kind of relitigate that. Um, but the partnership we have here is great. The, uh, to our partners across, you know, the everybody here, you know, we're committed to continued operations, maintenance, test training, all of that. To Roscoe, to UNAB, I look forward to seeing what your team does with this. Um, together, you'll ensure the F-35 meets what we need for the future. So today, it's not just about cutting a ribbon. It's about cutting a path forward on the F-35 of making it more lethal. So thanks and congrats to everybody that made this happen today. But to be honest, the work begins today. So fight on. Thank you, Major General Saber. We'd like to invite Brigadier General Coffey and Brigadier General Massaro to join the official party at the front stage for the official ribbon cutting. All right, y'all, on three. One, two, three. We gather here to celebrate the beginning of F-35 flight test for the Air National Guard and the Air Force Reserve while honoring our partnerships here at Eglin Air Force Base and honoring everyone who has worked diligently to make this day a reality. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for sharing this historic moment and celebrating with us today. Immediately following the ceremony, you're cordially invited to join us for light refreshments in the back of the hangar. Please stand for the playing of the Air Force song and departure of the official party. mean to do that. It was good timing. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our ceremony. Please join us for some refreshments at the back of the hangar, and thank you for joining us today.